Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got a bike that you can ride on water and some new waterproofs too because you're probably going to need them. Yeah, handy. Also got your upgrades, the bike vault and our main talking point, future tech that me and John want to see. Yes, let's do it. Right then, Ollie, seeing as you're back and you've got the most vivid imagination of anybody I know, I thought it's about time we put our little thinking caps on and we thought about bike tech that we'd love to see. Plus, it's a good opportunity for that lot watching to have a think about this too. Yeah. So first up, my idea is super thin bikes. Aero. Like it. I like what you're thinking here. I knew you'd like this one. Right, Ollie, it's time for you, my friend, to take a trip down memory lane. Imagine us holding hands, skipping down into the sun. No, don't imagine that. Right, okay, the year is 1996. It's the Atlanta Olympics. The US Olympic team took to the velodrome aboard a bike with the imaginative title of the Superbike. Now, it was made by GT, who really specialised in mountain bikes, but this bike was really cutting edge. Now, it had loads of great features about it, and one of them was the actual fact that they were bespoke made for each and every person who rode one. So the women's teams and also the men's teams, they all got them. And it was like, well, the equivalent really of having a suit exactly made for you. Your nice. custom dimensions. So they have any other standout features? Well, yeah, literally, it did not stand out. This bike was <laughs> super narrow, super thin. It's said to have been, well, two thirds more aerodynamic than a standard track bike, which is pretty impressive. But the fact that the hubs were about half the width and also the bottom bracket was half the width too, I think it says quite a bit. I mean, all right, Graham Obrey, he was tinkering around with this, but these were also reported to be $40 million for the, well, the whole lot to be made, basically. So again, it might have had a bit of marketing uh, spin on it, but that is pretty impressive. That's mad. But it does, it does make you think though, with materials in the future getting, well, lighter and stronger, it, it could be possible to build a bike that's just like super thin. Yeah. And I mean, well, aside from looking mint. Celeste? No, it just means like cool. Oh, right, okay. They, they would just have much reduced frontal area, in theory, making them far more aerodynamic. But I mean, imagine a bike where like head on, it's just kind of like... It's like a knife. Yeah. Yeah, those GTs were like that. I wonder if we'll see them again. Yeah, well. Let's hope so. I've got one for you then. Go on. What, what you, what's you thinking on more gears? Like 13 speed, 14 speed, a million speed. I told you you had a vivid imagination. Uh, right, extra <laughs> gears, yeah, they're all well and good and everything, but wow, well, 10 and 11 speed. I have still use 10 speed on one of my bikes, and I'm pretty happy with it. There are things I would rather see though. Yeah, I think me too, actually. Go on. Well, like greater durability. I think I'd rather have, if you could give me a 10 speed drivetrain, like yeah. Jura Ace 10 speed or something, yeah. but it lasts 10 times longer yeah. than, I don't know, even 11 speed, yeah. I'd, I'd have it. Really? Yeah. So, right, here's one then. So basically- like Greater durability, I think, is, is, is be amazing. Yeah, I like what you're thinking there. So I've got an idea then. How about a super light belt drive bike? Yeah, like yeah. in case. Like, yeah, 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 it's like, you know, hub gear, super light, works, Minimal maintenance. Yeah, it's a good idea. I mean, we've spoken about this before, the fact that conventional drivetrains are inefficient, but it would seem to be like quite a radical departure. Well, conventional drivetrains are inefficient when it comes to the fact that they get dirty and they're exposed to dirt. Mm. But um, yeah, interesting. Is belt drive the future? Well, they'll let us know, won't they? Yeah, they will. Yeah. Well, that's, that's just given me an idea, John. Go on. Well, cleaning, right? So an enclosed drivetrain is going to be more aerodynamic and also keep the drivetrain cleaner, but your frame's still going to get dirty. Yeah. So wouldn't it be good if bikes were kind of like, I don't know, self-cleaning in the future? And the way you could do that would be using the same hydrophobic ceramic coatings that you can get aftermarket to apply to cars. Mm. So people put these on, and if you're not familiar, they're hydrophobic so they repel water, and it just means that dirt doesn't stick to your car. Yeah. Imagine if that was integrated into you know bike frames and bike products, but maybe if it was like a permanent coating on the surface, you know these things are going to be possible in yeah. the future. As a standard thing as well from yeah. you. Do you remember at Eurobike? I saw that guy who had the the ceramic coating and stuff. That was really cool. Oh, I was mm. throwing loads of mud at it, and it, it just didn't stick. Um, tell you what, that'd be a real game changer in cyclocross mm. because I've even yeah. I have seen this. I remember once someone did something on some clothes. It might have been Bio Racer or someone, and they had 
Half of the bib short made out of this fabric and half of it not. And they rode along through all these like muddy lanes. And then like there was one bum cheek that was clean and one bum cheek that was dirty. Uh, not actual bum, don't worry, it was the actual shorts. Um, but yeah, you can imagine a cyclocross race, which is dead muddy, it could be the difference between literally winning and losing. Do you know what? I reckon we should do a video on this. We should try and ceramic coat a bike. I thought you meant like the No, not the bum, bum thing. Okay, right. We should ceramic coat a bike and yeah. then ride it through muddy weather and yeah. see what happens to it. Yeah, put it through its paces. I mean, even our friends on the mountain bike channel, they'd love this as well. Yeah, you? yeah. I'm getting really excited. I knew you'd be good for this. Vivid imagination. Thanks, man. That's all right. Oh yes, we couldn't do it, could we, without mentioning disc brakes. Now, disc brakes are better than rim brakes in certain circumstances. Let's face it, we're not going to open up that can of worms today because we don't have the time. But give me a disc brake that makes much less noise, or less noise, we can say, um, slightly lighter and, well, don't bend as easily or yeah, get damaged as easily, I guess, when you put them in and out of the car. Yeah. I'll be interested to hear what we could do about that. How are we going to do that? I don't know. I don't know. Those lot might know. Yeah, well, it's a good point, actually. If any of you guys have any ideas, maybe you're engineers, Ooh. about how disc brakes could be improved in the future, then, um, well, let us know in the comments. But your 50p, someone says carbon. And don't go deleting their comments. I don't delete comments. When there's 50p involved, you would. All right, here's one for you, then. Everlasting cleats. That sounds like something from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Well, I reckon that our friend Augustus Gloop would our approve friend. Ollie. Well, you never know if he's watching. I'd like to give him a shout out. Right, right are they then. chocolate? <laughs> They're not chocolate, no, but they would be everlasting, right? So when I put cleats on shoes, I absolutely obsess over it. I take hours and hours doing all the different measurements. I know you can draw around them and try and put them on, but it never really satisfies me. I like right. to take ages, but I don't want to take ages. So if someone out there could develop something that lasted forever, that would be absolutely amazing. Years ago, there was something called Foster cleats for look pedals, look, the old look delta ones, made of aluminium. Never to be seen again. Probably a lawsuit or something happened and they had to stop producing them. But yeah, an everlasting one would be great. I think one of the problems here, right, is consumerism. Yeah, true. So all these things we're talking about, everlasting stuff, Yeah. It's no good for consumerism, is it? Because you buy one, it lasts forever, and then the manufacturers go bust because they don't sell anything ever again. <laughs> it's great for us. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised you, as a tight-fisted northerner, aren't jumping for joy at these I, suggestions. I, I want it, but I've got, I, right, I want everlasting bearings. If we're doing everlasting. Oh, yeah, Augustus would be doubly happy. Well, everlasting bearings, I mean, we've got a step, or just ones that last longer. I yeah. mean, we've got... Um, a glimpse of a potential solution for this at Eurobike this year. We, we did. Cane Creek, we spoke, we've mentioned them before, they had their Hellbender bottom bracket. Mm. And, and what that featured was instead of the normal oil or lubricant that you would have as a liquid inside, or a non Newtonian fluid, inside um, the bearing uh, sealed cartridge. What you had instead was this kind of polymer matrix mm. that, that was like a sort of solid lubricant polymer thing. Yeah. And um, the idea was that it wouldn't ever wash out if you jet washed it. Great idea that, isn't it? It's wonder, really interesting. I mean, I wonder about the friction of it and everything. Yeah. I mean, in a headset, it'd be absolutely fine because, well, you know, it's not spinning around at speed, mm. is it? Uh, but I reckon your wheels and jockey wheels, I don't know. Yeah, it'd be great it to would, actually get some of those it, and test them. It'd be interesting to know if that kind of system does have more friction in it than a yeah. bearing. But I mean, I guess they've got to wear out at some time. point. They have to. Yeah. But I presume then you could keep the metal casing and just pop that out and put it back in the new one. Great idea. Mm. Everlasting. Right, what else then? What do you want to see? All right, I'd quite like to see a clear frame. No real reason, just... Well, just because, I suppose. I mean, it would look fantastic, wouldn't it? A clear frame. Yeah, a clear frame. Have you ever seen a clear can of Coke? They used no. to do it. <laughs> Someone out there, I remember, tab clear. It was just like a clear can. You could see what was in it. Fantastic. I do remember in the 90s, there was an obsession with making every sort of gadget clear. Like, yeah. you'd get, like, a Game Boy clear or yeah. a PlayStation controller that was clear. Or you'd get... I don't know, like a water pistol that was clear. Yeah. Now, the good thing about this is, for <laughs> someone who likes to tinker with things... The things like, I owned as a child. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That was his life uh, just explained in a nutshell. Uh, <laughs> the things here which, are, which actually sort of intrigues me about it is that those products you've just mentioned, before I went ahead and took them apart and got telling off from my dad, I could actually see what was inside of them, so I knew what I was going to get into. Mm. And I reckon with a clear frame, things like internal cable routing, that would be a joy to do, because you could see exactly what the cable was potentially getting stuck on. You could on, see on hidden motors as well. Oh, yes. 
You <laughs> could, yes. Lloydy, you wouldn't be able to get away with it anymore, mate. Yeah, I saw, I saw um, some like hidden, well, some clear frame components before actually at a Canyon launch a few years ago for the Ultimate. Why Might have some pictures, I'll this. dig them out. Why have you never told me about this? Mm. But I guess it begs the question, what at home would you love to see in the future? Yeah, let us know. Your imagination's more vivid than yeah. ours. Just go wild. Not too wild. Right, now about those muddy bib shorts. Hot tech now. And first up, Rafa has released some new waterproof jackets for winter riding. And the jackets make use of the same fabric that's found in the Gore One Shake Dry jackets. Yeah, now they've got a lightweight one too, which of course does use that fabric and looks very similar actually to the Shake Dry one from mm. Gore. Uh, but it's it has got some, kind of like, yeah, Rafa branding on it. Yeah, just some subtle details really. Mm. I like the look of that. Yeah, and there's said. also a sort of heavier duty, more insulated one that makes use of a fleece lining in it made from Polartec Alpha fabric for when the weather's, well, really, really bad. It's got to be warm there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it's it's got quite an interesting design because it's got a snood that comes out the top as well and keeps your head warm. Do you know what? Well. I've got a jacket from someone that I got a few years ago and it's got one of those inbuilt hoods. or It's like built on poppers. Mm. You can put it up. And when you put it up, you do not want to take it down because you think, oh, I've warmed up now, I'll take it down. And you get so cosy in them. It's yeah. nice, though. Interesting design. Yeah. John, do you love cycling? Yeah. Do you love the sea? Yeah. And also, do you love e-bikes? Yes, yes, yes! Well, in that case, the Manta XE1 Hydrofoiler e-bike could be for you. Oh yes, this means I can get out of my Lycra Sailors outfit and go out for a ride. Yeah, it's essentially an e-bike that you can ride on the high seas and it hydroplanes. Wow. I reckon the Tech Squadron could well remember this one. Yeah. Because we talked about it in a previous tech show, didn't we? We did. Because it was a Kickstarter project, I do believe. Yeah, correct, yeah. Yeah, so what started as a crowdfunding project is actually taking orders now. Although, if you do order one, you'll have to wait until May 2020 to get your hands on it. And it'll cost you $7,940. Give us a loan. It's just drop in the ocean for you, that, John. Oh, I see what you did then. Bad joke. Right, okay. <laughs> I did have a little look actually the video of this. So once you get going, you can actually actually hydroplane along. How mm. cool does that look? That looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks like loads of fun. Oh, you'd love it. Imagine you commuting from your riverside cottage down the down the river, down the canal to Bath. Oh, idyllic that. Yeah, cutting up narrow boats, tearing up the waterways. I don't know about that, mate. So I'll buy a leather jacket. Bad to the bone. <laughs> you'd love it. Right, and finally, French brand Time have released a new range of pedals designed for off-road use or mixed surface adventure riding called the Cyclo. Yeah, the Cyclo is available in three models. The top of the range is the Cyclo 10. It's the lightest and stiffest option. Just 128 grams claimed for each pedal. And there's also the Cyclo 6 and Cyclo 2. Yeah, now these pedals, like we've said, are designed for that off-road or mixed adventure use. And But they've also taken technology from a road pedal, so it's got a bigger platform so you can get down more power, I guess, it's safe to say, although you can still get a lot of power out of quite a small pedal too. But the important thing about it is it's got loads of clearance for mud. It uses a two-bolt cleat, and well, it looks ideal, really, for those of us who don't want to go down the dual-sided SPD-style route. Yeah, intriguing. More nice. tech next week. It's now time for Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades, where you submit evidence of the upgrades that you've made to your bikes or equipment for a chance to win a mystery prize. That's right, we're going to mix it up from now on, aren't we, a little bit? So, who knows what you could win? Yeah, it could be rubbish, it could be great. You're just gonna have to wait and find out. Yeah. Anyway, John, I wasn't here last week, so who won? Well, it was, it was between Gavin and Rob, and right. the winner was Gavin, 66% of the votes. So get in touch Comprehensive. with us, Gavin. Yeah, on Facebook to arrange the delivery of the last ever GCN Camelback Eddie water bottle. Lucky, lucky Limited person. edition. Exactly, strictly. Right, anyway, this week then, we've got a battle of the Danish on our hands. Oh, because yeah. there was two absolutely cracking entries. Bacon versus pastries. Steady on, steady <laughs> on. Right. 
Carlsberg versus something else. I jest. Right, okay, first up then is Lasse from Denmark. Uh, now, a neighbour of Lasse was going to throw away an old Jamis cross bike. The bike was in, quite honestly, dire condition. Uh, but Lasse was inspired by, apparently, this is Lasse's words, not mine. Yeah. John's awesome garbage to gravel build. Huh. Uh, Lasse decided to see if this old bike could be given a new life with enough love and elbow grease. Taking it apart, it became apparent that many things needed a complete refurb, and some were too badly damaged to, well, carry on using. Uh, but with the goal of spending as little money as possible and reusing as much as Lasse could, he repainted the frame with a two-tone paint and the Kieran Flake Rainbow top coat from Spray Dot Bike. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Uh, with a new rear mech, Continental Cross King 35mm tyres, cable, saddle, bar tape, this old bike was given a new life. It cost around £80, so about $100, I guess, and some old spare parts, super fun in the woods, and will also serve as a great commuter and winter bike. I, Look at that I rusty just old wreck. I believe how rusty it was and how, it, you know, the saddle has been attacked by a bear. It looked. I mean, look at it. Well, like the well, saddle's yeah. ripped to bits and yeah. the bar's mental. It looks like it's been. Look at that. It looks like he's been in the North Sea for a while, actually, Lassa. No, it's all stripped out. Whoa, whoa, look at that. whoa. Wowzers. Yeah. And I love like that, that paint, paint job. Oh, I see. Great minds. Yeah. Um, that's mint. That's wicked. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? That? Yeah. Well. Right. Go on, who's Lassa up against then? He's up against Yepper from Odensea. You know that quite well, actually. Well, you managed to pronunciate that one all right. Well, I don't actually. know. I yeah, yeah, it's Yepper yes. from... Well, I think I think the Danes would say Unsa. Yep, like Yepper. Yep, Yepper. Yepper. It's definitely Yepper. Yepper's Yepper sister was uh, like turning that. 30. They definitely don't speak like that. <laughs> well, anyway, Yepper's yep. sister was turning 30. Yeah. And she likes bikes, but has never owned anything than a really, like, heavy, sluggish, rubbish, uh, internally geared bike. So, yeah, <laughs> The ones that we were talking about earlier on that we dream of having yes. an internally geared <laughs> More cleaner. aero, yes. cleaner, yeah. yeah. So Yepa, um, as a vintage aficionado, uh, decided to uh, correct that mistake and build her a bike. Um, so he's taken a 1979 Everton mixed, uh, and he got it at a bargain price, roughly £35. Bargain? Whoa. And he said it was unusable, all the bearings were seized and rubbish, and the previous owner had painted over 40 years worth of rust spots. Naughty. Yeah, so he stripped it, sanded it, and, uh, well, well, yeah, completely stripped it. With the bike stripped, uh, he got it primed, painted, clear-coated it with a spray dot bike again. Yes. They're doing well out of us. We should be they getting, are. like, a bonus. Yeah, a commission of yes. some sort, yeah. Uh, in British Racing Green. Well, I was thinking more in bullion bars, the commission. Well, oh, no, sorry, the no, paint the paint was <laughs> Racing Green. And then he fitted with an older set of wheels, heavy, but reliable. Oh. Um, Clement 32mm tyres, Suntour a a ARX rear mech, Shimano RX friction shifters. Oh, wow. Look at that. Tell you what, Yepa's sister Look is going to be. The stripping. Pretty impressed with that, isn't she? Yes. That racing green, it looks like the Flying Scotsman. Yeah, it does, it? yeah. Or an, an E type Jack. That's oh, exactly what I was thinking, actually. More, I'm more of a Jag man than the Flying Scotsman. Yes. 4472 was the number of the Flying Scotsman. Okay. Uh, yes. And the decals as well. It looks good. I tell you what, it looks really nice. Yeah. I do like those mixed frames. I like that. Yeah. That's, Mug guards uh, as well. That's yeah, very, just, great classy. Yeah, just cruise around those Danish streets on that. I hope your sister realises how lucky she is. To have a brother like you. Yes. Who's right. it going to be though? That's tough this week. That's close one this is. week. He's going to be close this week. You decide. Yeah. Boat up there. Mystery prize as well. <laughs> I like a mystery. Right, it's now time for the bike vault, which we, <laughs> we love it, don't we? Mm. It's so good. We like, you know, when, when another presenter wants to come in, when we let them, they're so excited to come in and do the bike vault. It's yeah. ridiculous. Anyway, if you're not aware what the bike vault is, well, it's nice and simple. Use the uploader tool found down there in the description below, and you can upload pictures of your beloved Pride and Joy. And we want all the details about it as well, don't we? Mm. It's got to look good too. And then, well, if it gets rated nice, well, it's a nice bike. If it gets mm. rated super nice, it goes into the bike vault, and, well, we ring the bell. Yeah. Um, where do we have to get, where we've got the bell? We get the bell there? Funny enough. Yes, we have. What? All oh, right. I thought, I thought the um, the bell had uh, 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 gone missing. 
Well, it had gone missing, Ollie, but I went out and bought another another one. Are you yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Look, it's a bit... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Getting right, a little yeah. bit red. Yeah, that's... Oh, right, okay. A little bit strange. But don't worry, though, mate, because the original bell, I mean, this one cost me £9.99. The original one, the IT squad are looking through all the CCTV footage to try and find the culprit who removed it from here. Right, anyway, let's crack on with the first one in this week. That comes okay. in from Tim in Beverly in East Yorkshire. That's up your neck of the woods, oh, is it? It is I. That's a... It, no, it's Tim, it's not I. It's, oh, oh, right, it's, a, yeah. it's your funny language, isn't it? Right, okay, it's a Cyfac, they're French bikes. They were one of the first people to use like quite different shaped tubes and stuff. What are you thinking? I like it. I tell you what, he's watched the vid. He has. I mean, he's, he's oh, paying attention. Oh, Tim, Tim, Look Tim, at the Tim. three o'clock crank, biggie smalls. Yeah. You know, he's cleaned it. Nice, clear background. Wheels are aligned. He, I mean, he's doing a good job there, isn't he? We've he, got... He's removed his accessories. He's removed his bolt cages. Tim's going to go thirsty. We've, we've... Nice bar tape yeah. job he's done there. Yeah. Looks, Neat wrap. Yeah. Looks looks like a thick as well, doesn't it? And um, it matches his pedals and the blue bits on the frame. Yeah, and also the blue knock-on cables that haven't gone unnoticed by us, has it? They've gone unnoticed by me and my colour blindness. I was struggling to pick those out. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, super nice for me, that. Yeah, super nice all day long. Do you want to ring it? No, no. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ring it. Right, cool. who do we have up next then? Wowzers. Crumbs, I know that place. Yes, um, it's Darren. And Darren appears to be at Longleat's house. Oh, you um, little devil, Darren. I hope that he didn't drive his, uh, well, cycle his bike through the monkey enclosure and have monkeys doing obscene things yeah. on his handlebars. Yeah. Uh, as they often do to people's cars. But yes. Longleat, by the way, is a safari park. <laughs> and in, a stately home. Yes, yes, yes and a stately <laughs> home. Uh, is it Lord Bath who lives there? It is, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's uh, well. That's a very, very nice Cervelo C3. He's got there. It's Ram Force One by. Mm. Um, good to see guards in action. Yeah, it's, I it, do it's like become, a guard. It's become guard season mm, here. Officially guard season. This is actually. near to where we are. Although that's a nice day. The roads are covered in <laughs> rubbish right now. They're really <laughs> dirty. Yes, they are. Um, you could I, do with some of that. Uh, Ceramic coating on there, couldn't they? I like the functionality of that. I like that he's got his guards on and yep. it's neat. Yeah. The matching bottles matching kind bottles. of works. I mean, the, the cranks, they're not doing it for me. I know. The valves, they're not doing it for me. And he's not in Biggie Smalls. No. And he's 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 not cleaned it. I mean, he is mid-ride, yeah. unless he lives at Longleat. Unless it is Lord Bath. But he no, says his name's Darren. Name's Darren. Yeah, it's Lord not, Bath's it's... first name isn't Darren. No. I've forgotten his name. There was a programme all about the long leak thing on TV. Did you ever mm. see that? Ben Fogel. Yeah. Anyway, forget yeah. about that. American. No, there's another one around. as well. But yeah, okay. Right, nice. Yeah, nice bike. Yeah, we could have just done with better attention to detail here. Right, okay, next up is Steve from Australia with a 1996 Eddie Merckx MX Leader in Team Motorola colorway. Now this one is uh, Greg Randolph's old team bike, uh, I've been led to believe. Now Randolph, Random fact, he rode just one season with Motorola, or uh, probably even half a season, started in May, I think, and uh, was a main support rider for Lance Armstrong during the Atlanta Olympics in 96. Right, two questions here. That's, okay. a, that's, that's a mint looking bike. Yeah. But why are we in small, big? Don't know. And where on earth is it? That's got to be in a photo studio. Look at the shadow. See, I noticed a few of these things when I was picking them out, and I thought, do you know what? The saddle isn't. Re I mean, the bars are high. <laughs> the stem is higher than the saddle. I think it's retro, though. Yeah, we should. Because yeah, you, you just use the drops on these bikes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, but the shadow is intriguing as well, isn't it? It is. Yeah. There's yeah. something I really like about it because it's, it's a great photo. It's a professional yeah. level. Yeah. But piece of bike photography. But I we're think dealing it's the biggie with. smalls we're missing out on. It is, and it and the chain could be cleaner. Yeah, and the saddle could be. But it's an more exquisite retro. bike. It's a shame that you've gone to all that trouble yeah. of, of doing a professional level photo. Mm. Something that we, you know, we can we can advise you've, on. You've Don't lined worry, the valves up, you've help. cleaned it, it's mint, but you haven't yep. cleaned the chain and no. you've put it in the wrong gear. Could could what are well you doing? could well have been a Sedis black chain. Ridiculous. But anyway, no. yeah. Okay, so nice then. Steve, get in touch and Ollie and I can run you through our, you know, I mean, we, we, we do offer photography services outside of here. Nice. Right, okay, nice bike. Okay, who's next? Oh, next up we've got um, Andrew, who's in Vancouver, Canada. 
uh, with his S Works tarmac disc. Oh, Look at that. that. A bit of grub on the bar tape. Yeah, yeah. What's he been doing to yeah, that? I don't know. Well, he's obviously maybe moves around a bit on it. So what we got? Right, we got valves lined up. Tick. Valve caps. Not really a tick, is it? Although no. they do. They have, they, he's in biggie smalls. Yeah, approved. Um, Bottle cages don't match, but they kind of match with the frame and what's going on with the colour yeah, scheme. I think he's he's removed his, <coughs> his appendages. You know, he's got no saddle yeah. bag on there and stuff. Yeah, everything's it's quite cool. nice. I quite like how on that. Um, on that, is that a fabric saddle? The, the white like edge kind of works pretty well with the, the white bits on the <laughs> rest of the bike. I just thought, do you reckon this has been photoshopped and that's just a picture of a rock? Because that white edge, maybe it's not a white edge. Maybe that's just a really bad photoshop. Nah, I'm going that's real. Okay. Because there's a bit of, he's done well to recreate oh, yeah, the, the grass, grass in front yeah. of the But wheel. maybe he's taken that from his aquarium at home and he's, no? Do you know what, bonus points as well, because if he's in Canada, yeah. he probably only had five seconds this is what I know a lot about Canada. Yeah. He had about five seconds before a bear came yeah. and attacked yeah. him. Yeah. And the weather looks too good photo. as well. So, yeah. you know, maybe he was up, was he was up against it. Maybe he submitted that before the bear came away. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's well, super nice. Yeah, Andrew, su Andrew, if you're still with us, mate. So, <laughs> only mm. joking. Super nice bike. <laughs> Lovely. All right, who've we got next oh, then? Oh, okay. tell what? you what? Wow. wow, hang on a minute, we need to, we need, to... oh no, it's all gone wrong. It's all gone wrong in the bike vault. This is Thomas in Seminole County, Florida. And this is amazing, it's flawless, it's a killer, it heals the pain, it's ready to go out and start spinning the wheel. It's not too funky. When you ride it outside, you'll get lots of freedom. Have faith in me, Ollie. And most of all, don't let the sun go down on me if I forget my lights on that bike. Didn't know you were a, a big George fan. Big George Michael, I am indeed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a Bowie fan myself. Go on then, hit me with some facts. I've got some interesting facts for you, right, about Bowie. Yeah. Now, of course, real name David Jones. Uh, changed his name to Bowie, his stage name, so he wouldn't be confused with Davy Jones from the Monkees. Uh, and it's also a common misconception that David Bowie's eyes are actually uh, uh, heterochromatic, i.e. different colours. This is incorrect. The actual fact is ocular oddity uh, actually came about during an accident when he was 15, or Zavid was just 15 years old. Uh, he got in a fight with his good friend George Underwood over a girl and uh, George Underwood's fingernail sliced Zavid's uh, eye. Uh, yeah. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's awful. awful, isn't it? Yeah, so as a result, they actually suffered from an enlarged pupil for the rest of his life. Oh. And that wasn't enough, right? Right. If that, if, in 2004, get this, right? David Bowie was hit in the eye with a lollipop while performing what? in Oslo, Norway. Dangerous stuff. Yeah, it was thrown on stage at him and uh, it became stuck. And a member of uh, David Bowie's crew actually managed to remove it. And the uh, singer then bravely continued the show. Ollie, I can't make you love me. Did they try and get me in the eye on purpose? I don't know, but that's a fantastic muriel, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Super nice muriel. Yeah. Oh, I love David Bowie. Yeah. Let's Dance love is George my Michael. favourite album. Controversial, I know. Uh, All right. But... Oh, well, we've got, got to give it a super nice, haven't we? Yeah. More Bike Vault next week. There we are, another tech show in the bag. Love it. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy our content and like what we do, then you can help support the channel by subscribing if you haven't already, and also click the bell icon. And if you'd like some GCN merch, I who, mean... Who wouldn't? These hoodies are going to keep you warm. Winter is coming, unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere. I know some of you are. Then we've got something for you. We've got T-shirts. Yeah, exactly. And water bottles. Yeah, all sorts. You name it, we've got it. Right. To watch another video, click down here. And to watch another one, just click on Zavid. Just Zavid? Yeah, him. <laughs> I knew you were waiting for me. Zavid Bowie. <laughs>